Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Swagman XC2 two bike platform rack here on our 2018 Toyota 4Runner. So, if you're wanting a simplistic way of getting your bikes up to that trailhead with you, that way you can start having some fun, well, the XC2 is definitely a great bet for a lot of people. What's nice about it, we're not going to be breaking the bank to make sure we can just get our bikes up, start having some fun. And it is really modular. What I mean by that, we're going to be able to fold this up and even remove that rear shank that it has, making it a lot easier to store this somewhere inside your home. And what that'd be great about, if you do have like any kind of apartment dwelling going on or just not a lot of room in your garage and in your home, this is going to fold up, become really easy to store. That way it's going to be taken off your vehicle in no time at all. It is going to be lightweight and aluminum as well, making it really easy to get on and off of our vehicle, which is great. So I think a lot of people that are city living with this are really going to dig it. Now, it is also going to get the job done. Even if you're living in the suburbs, you're not too worried about taking off um, your bike rack or anything like that for room. Um, you're still uh, going to get a great little decent bike rack here, which is really cool. So we are having a center frame hold though. The one thing to keep in mind, not going to be great for your carbon frame bikes. There is going to be downwards pressure here on your bike and that can end up warping and deteriorating that carbon frame. A couple other things to look out for. If you do have any women's bikes, step through bikes or kids bikes, you may need to make sure you actually have a decent enough horizontal support to go ahead and latch on here. So the step throughs though, gonna benefit from the versatility of our two hooks here. As you can see, we can get really, really low with this rear hook. So if you have a step through bike where your frame's really, really low, might have a decent job of actually clamping on there and then securing your bike, which is great. So I like the versatility of these arms and how they work is very, very easy. You can see it won't be popping up unless I push on that back lever or that lever to actually start releasing our tires. Now, how is our bike also being held in here? Well, we do have these bottom wheel hoops. Oops. All I have to do, have a little speed knob, back that off, lefty loosey. That's going to allow me to shift this around my post here. And that's great for your varying wheelbases, right? I can bring these in for my BMXers, getting them out wider for some of our trail bikes, which is great. And I really, really do like how we can bring a bunch of different people with us with this bike rack, which is great. And it really isn't hard to maneuver at all right there. It's nice and locked in. The one thing, you might be starting to see a little degradation here on the black powder coat finish. Um, with that, it could just be a little lubrication there underneath those posts when you want to slide them. That way it doesn't scrape and bump like you're seeing here. Now, this guy has been in studio for a while, and it is still looking good other than just those few little scrapes, which is great. Well, taking a look here with our bike, we can see that we're not having too bad of an interaction with our front forerunner today. Now, we are losing a little bit here in this rear window. My taillights still having really good distance between them, and we do have the top cowling. So not too worried about people seeing us with this on here, especially because the rack doesn't take up too much room. That's one thing I like about the XC2 as well. So before we get the bike off, what kind of bikes can we get on here? Well, we've already kind of gone over the types of bikes. We do have a 35-pound weight capacity per bike, so do keep that in mind when you are loading up your bikes. And we also do have a inch and a quarter shank natural with a two-inch sleeve converter. Now that's excellent for a variety of different vehicles out there. We can throw it here on our full runner with a two-inch hitch, or if we do have another vehicle at home, we can sw quickly swap it out, which is great. The one thing to take note, though, we can't utilize this guy on a class one hitch. We need to make sure we're on a class two or up. That way we are nice and supported on that tongue weight, which is great. But to get our bike off really isn't going to take any time. All you have to do, hold on to your bike. You have one little post that's holding it in place. Now it is released. I like to take the arms off all the way as well, set them on my wheel hoops. That way uh, I know exactly where they are before I take off. And then I can just simply lift my bike this way. I can walk it up this way. I can walk it up that way. However we need to go about taking our bike off, we can now, and we're all ready, ready to ride. Now mounting it, really, really simple. One thing I like about the wheel hoops, there's no straps that I have to worry about. All I got to do, have my wheel hoops set exactly where I need them to. If they're not correct, simply back off this knob, slide it to where I need my wheel bases, and it's already ready to play, which is great. So I'm just going to run this guy down. And then we need to start taking a look at some of our dimensions here. And if we can actually open up our hatch. To do that, though, you actually have to drop this center hitch. And that just requires you to walk right up, pull that pin like so. Now we can drop this. And now I come to the back of my 4Runner, open up my hatch here. I don't know if it's power lock. There we go. And now I have access to my hatch right now. I'm going to here get those bike helmets cool. There's anything else I might need. And one thing about it, too, when it's in this position, you can walk it back up. And then you can walk up one of your sides here. And then, you, of course, latch that in place. I will say, I have a hard time getting this to latch all the way like this. Find myself dropping this post on the other side and then pinning this in. But that can be excellent if you find somewhere where, yeah, I'm going to need to use my back carrier soon. 
I want to get a lot of easy access to the back here, that's one thing that's really cool about the XC2 that you can do uh, that not a lot of carriers can do. A lot of them can tilt away, but then you still kind of have to worry about them. Well, let me just drop this really quick. We'll drop this hatch. We'll start taking a look at some of our dimensions here. Really, really simple to use these pins, and I love that they're attached to those safety cables. That way, if you're like me, a little forgetful, they don't go anywhere, ready to rock and roll. But let's take a look here, how much clearance we're working with. That's going to be a big one, and that's simply from the ground to the very end of my carrier here, and from the ground to the bottom here of my wheel hoop, that's putting me at 23 and a half inches. So that's a ton of clearance. Love to see that. Of course, our forerunner does sit up really tall. Now, if you find yourself kind of taking this in the back roads, having a very steep incline, I'd be a little careful. Um, although 23 and a half inches is well enough out of the way, it's almost two feet. The one thing to say though, if you do have some of your skinnier tires that aren't quite fitting in here all the way and they're sagging just a little bit in these wheel hoops, do keep that in mind, that can lower your clearance. But again, with 23 and a half, I think we're in a pretty good position here with the 4Runner, which is great. And kind of talking about taking this off-road, I don't think the XC2 is that well situated for any kind of off-road handling, just because we could start seeing a lot of flex here with this being so far on the back of the 4Runner. And we only have one hold on our bike. I would look at a carrier that's going to be a little bit more decent. If you find yourself wanting to take your forerunner in the back roads or doing a kind of overlanding, probably not the best bet for you. Probably try to stick this guy on a road somewhere just because we don't have too much hold on it. But I digress. Let's take a look from the back here of our forerunner. From the back bumper here today to the very end of our carrier, that's going to be putting us right at 23 and one quarter of an inch to the back end of our carrier. So definitely not too much length being added in. I do love to see that. Unfortunately, we don't have a way of actually kind of compressing that or stowing it closer to our vehicle. The only thing we can achieve is actually bringing both of these arms up. And this can still be nice though for your left to right movements right when we're trying to park it. The only thing to keep in mind, probably gonna lose just a little bit more on that backup camera in this position. However, we are offset here towards our driver's side. So primarily, you're still gonna get a lot of that driver's side viewance in that rear camera, which I do like to see, which is great. And this folded position here, not really interacting with that rear window, which is great to see. And obviously our taillights, well seen by everybody that's behind us, do like that. And again, you can see how modular this gets, really reduces the footprint down, which is great. On the inside here though, we do have that engine quarter shank as we mentioned before with that two inch sleeve converter. And on the inside of that, you are seeing a threaded anti-rattle bolt with just a little clip that's holding in place. Now these things are pretty standard across the industry, but you'll love to see them. It's gonna take all that shake and play we naturally have here inside of our hitch, remove it, and you can see our entirety of our forerunner is actually moving. That means we're in line with our vehicle, making for a nice or smoother ride for ourselves our bike rack, but especially our bikes. Now, the one thing to be said about the XC2, no innate security measures on here, no hitch lock and no locks to keep your bike to your carrier when you leave it unattended. That's why I think the XC2 is excellent if you just find yourself throwing it on here, then getting your bikes loaded up, and then taking yourself to the trailhead, and you're not too worried about the XC2 staying on your vehicle at all times, especially because how easy it is to take off since it's lightweight and modular. Um, however, we do have a variety of locking accessories available here at eTrailer.com. If you're so worried about it walking away from your vehicle, that way you can actually leave it unattended and it'll still be there. But I think that's really the biggest failing the XC2 has. I think it's a great little bike rack. It doesn't break the bank, and it really gets the job done, and what more could you want, right? Um, if you're looking for something a little bit nicer of a two bike platform rack, I always recommend the Rocky Mounts monorail two bike platform rack. Now it is gonna be a little bit more expensive than this guy. However, we're gonna get a little bit more security in our bikes. We can tilt away, basically getting all those premium features that you'd kind of expect from a nicer little bike rack. But otherwise, I think that about does it for our look here today at the Swagman XC2 two bike platform rack on our 2018 Toyota 4Runner. I'm Bobby, thanks for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.